is another day that the Lord has made. I'm rejoicing and I'm being glad in it. He didn't have to wake me up this morning, but he did. And I'm so glad he did. The Lord gave us another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. Gave us another day to get it right. So how y'all doing this evening? This is a beautiful Sunday that I have been to church. I got out of church. Now I'm figuring out what I'm going to eat. And sitting down, trying to do me a little video before I even start cooking. But God is so good. Today's a sunshiny day, as you can see. Beautiful day. So, I pray you all is well. You all is doing good. Those that went to church, those that watched it on TV, that virtual, those that didn't go to church, God bless you on this day. You all have got my coffee, not my tea. It's bitter. I'm trying to get a little bit away from the sugar and stuff. But let's say a quick prayer and we're going to get right into it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you for another beautiful, glorious day that you have made, allowing us another day, another chance to get it right. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to look down on everybody in the whole wide world, Lord. We need you and we can't get along without you. We got some people need you for one thing, maybe sick. Somebody may need you for another, dear Lord, that they're going through trials and tribulations, your bills and things. And as you know, you got a war going on in Ukraine. They need you, dear Lord, to shine favor down on them, dear Lord. Them and their family and their children, dear Lord. But Father God, we just got some people in jail that the foster crew that need you. We got people in the old folks' home, dear Lord. We need you. We got people in the hospital that's sick, dear Lord. We need you. In a time like this, dear Lord, we ask you to cover, cover us with your precious blood, dear Lord. We know that everything is going to be all right. We ask you to give us the strength and the courage to hang on in there, to be overcomers. Don't give up on you, because we know that you is the one that we can count on even until the end of time. And we know that you said in your word that you will not put more on us than we can bear. I ask this, dear Lord, to strengthen us, dear Lord. Screen us, Lord. Ask this in your son Jesus' name. I pray as we discuss this word, we want you to give us a word from you on high that we can go on and we can live in a time like this. In your name, precious name, Jesus. Amen and glory be to your holy name. Woo, to God be the glory. We can never pray enough prayer for what's going on in the world. I ask you to pray every day, all day. Pray when you get up. Pray when you, you eat your breakfast. Pray when you go to work. Pray when you get out of work. Pray when you lay down at night. Pray while you just pray without even thinking about it. Prayer, prayer, prayer is the key to the kingdom. Faith unlock the door. Prayer of the righteous prevails much. God is in the healing and the blessing business. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Overcomer 2. Don't give up. I'm going to try to go on and not make this long. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the book of Ruth. She was one woman, courage woman, you know, that didn't give up, was an overcomer. And God blessed her on the end. So we're just going to go right on into it. Let our reader read a little bit about the story. So you would know it. The ones that don't know it. Then we'll keep on going. Book of Ruth. Chapter 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. That there was a famine in the land. Mm -hmm. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah. Went to sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife. And his two sons. There was a family in the land, I mean, it was hard times and, you know, for food and making it and probably jobs and stuff. And so he wanted to move his family, you know, and he was going to Movite, you know, they, they, they were Movite, that they was going to Movite, women took his wife and his children and tried to do better for himself, 
you know, that we do that. We move away, my grandchildren, my grandkid, and when they move to Texas and and my daughter and thing to better yourself because you know it's hard time here trying to make it. And so that's what people do. They try to move to better themselves. And that's what he did. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, mm -hmm. and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. Mm -hmm. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. The country of Moab. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left, and her two sons. Mm -hmm. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. Mm -hmm. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. Mm -hmm. And the woman was left of her two sons in a hut. Now that's hard times. When your husband then died, you done left left the, your own country. You done you done left that man. You going with your husband uh, to another country. Then your sons and they get uh, wives out of another country and stuff. So you done left all that behind. Then your husband died. That's a hard pill to swallow by itself. And then turn around, your two sons die. I mean, you got daughters now, you got daughter in laws, and then their husband died, and your, and then your son. You know, that's going through hard times. And then you done left your land and went to this country and went somewhere else. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You got some of us that we leave and we do better go to another country, another state, whether it be Texas, whether it be Memphis, whether it be uh, Florida, whether it be New York, whether it be Arizona. Anywhere you go to try to better yourself. And then Eddie, you left. Now you got trouble where you at because when you long as you was in your own country, everything it was hard time and the reason why you left, but everything else was okay. Now you go to another city, country, now look like everything you have, you're losing it. Some of y'all have been there, some of y'all know what I'm talking about and stuff. So, some people can see how Naomi felt. Felt like everything just was going wrong with her. She was just cursed. Husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. Mm -hmm. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore, she went forth out of the place where she was mm -hmm. and her two daughters-in-law with her. Mm -hmm. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. See, she finna go back to Judah, where she had left uh, Bethlehem, in Bethlehem. Where she had left the her to her and tried to do better. So now, and she left to try to do better, now, and they were doing great. Now, she trying to, fin to go back and say, well, I done lost everything. Now, I'm finna go back. I'm finna go back home. A lot of people wait until they get older and then they come back home where things are quieter and, you know, it's it just small here and, and then in the city in the fast life and stuff. But sometimes you lose a lot of things before you come back. So she was letting her daughter along them know that they can go back home to their parents or where they familiar with their God. You know, she was going to go back to where she come from. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. Mm -hmm. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will ye go with me? Mm -hmm. Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? She said, no, no, I can't give you no more. I, I ain't got no more sons in my womb for you to marry. She wanted them to go to their own country where they could marry and they could do good. Turn again, my daughters, go your way. For I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they were grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? 
Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes at the hand of... She was trying to tell them, I got nothing else for you. Even if I got a husband and had children, sons, they would never be too old to marry them. And they're going to wait on them. She was letting them know, I don't have anything else. The Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Now that's something. That is some courage for you to follow your mother-in-law after your husband had died. And you could have stayed with your own people knowing that Naomi didn't have anything for left for her. And she didn't want to go back to her God. Didn't want to go back to her people. She wanted wherever Naomi went, that's where she wanted to go. She said, your people going to be my people. The God you serve going to be my God. Now that's an overcome. That's a person that don't give up. When thou diest, will I die? Mm. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. Mm -hmm. When she saw that she mm. was steadfastly minded to go with her, now, that she had to speak unto her. Through with it. So they two went until they came to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath... So, we're going to stop there. If y'all want to know the book of Ruth, I just wanted to read a little bit of it so you can be familiar with Naomi and Ruth and her daughter-in-law. So, at reason why I dwelled on Naomi and Ruth, because Ruth... She stayed there with Naomi, even though Naomi didn't have anything. Naomi said she would curse. She would go out there and try to provide food for her and Naomi. She went out there to the field where, you know, uh, where Boaz, y'all know the story, where she would just pick. She was just picking, picking stuff of wheat where she can go back and take it to Naomi where they can cook and they can make some food out of it. And stuff. She went out there even though she was in a strange land, strange people, didn't know the women's over there when she was going up. People she was picking, taking her chances to feed her and her mother in law. And where God blessed her, blessed her, blessed her with a husband and some children, Naomi Kent, folks. So to see how God can turn things around when you don't give up, when you just overcome the world. Then look at Moses. Let's go up in this real quick and I'm not going to go to it in here where Moses, where God put Moses on a mission where he told Moses to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go and Moses, he he didn't want to do it and he made all kinds of excuses. He couldn't speak well, like me, of course. So couldn't speak well. But God, I'm going to give you your brother Aaron because he's going to be your voice, Pete. But I want you to do it. And then Moses know, okay, well, I better go on and do it. And even though Pharaoh said, no, nah, and he told him to go back and do this. And he had to go back over and over again and told him to lead his people to the promised land where you know there was hard, there was trials, and there was tribulation and all that. But he was an overcomer. He hung on in there. That's what we have to do, you all. You know, Jesus. Jesus came to die for our sins. He overcome the world. Well, they talked about him, they lied on him, they spit on him, they, I mean, crucified him, and he overcome all the world. So we got to be like Christ. We got to be an overcomer. You know, the Bible, the Bible don't teach us about quitting. 
The Bible teaches us about enduring temptation and it difficult times, hard times coming. The Bible teaches us about overcoming the world. Not quitting. Regardless of what you're going through, not quitting. Some people get sick and they just give up. They just quit. Some people marriages, been married for a long time. 40 and 50 years and 30 and 20 years. They just give up on their marriage. Some folks give up on their children. Children so disobedient, they're out in the world doing drugs and doing everything, cussing and fussing. Some parents just give up on their children. But I dare you to hang on in there and pray and tell the Lord, the Lord fix it. Be an overcomer. Some children just give up on their parents. Parents try to teach them and tell them everything they can tell. Tell them and done help them, done bought them up, done cared for them, and they down lived them, fed them, and done did all they could. And they just throw their hands in there in the air and just give up on their parents because they don't want to. They don't want to accept criticism or to accept their parents trying to tell them what's right and telling them that don't do this and don't they just give up on they just give up on their parents, you know. Some people just quit, quit their jobs. You know, they're going through this pandemic and uh, this COVID, and they just quit the job because they're scared. Uh, they want to get, you know, COVID or uh, uh, be around nobody and fear for all that. But I dare you to stand up and be an overcomer and say, you know, God got this. For God, I live, and for God, I die. Some people just quit and stop going to church all of a I mean, you mean they didn't close the church down and you got it on TV, you got it on YouTube, and you got it anywhere that you got it. now, they don't open up church, you can go back to church. Some people they still still afraid of going to church for whatever reason or not. I don't, I wanna get into that, but you got it on TV, you got it on YouTube, you got it on Facebook, you got it on TikTok, you got it on everything. So it is not a excuse to give up on God. To say this, give up on God. And, yeah, I mean, God, why would he allow this and he would do this and he ain't did this and he ain't done, did, done that. God got eyes everywhere where he sees everything. And in due time, in due season, God is still there. You got people that overcome sickness. You got People that overcome COVID. You don't got people that don't overcome the hardship of the job. You got people just to overcome. Are you one of them? Hang on in there. I'm going to give you a few, few scriptures where it says, it says James 5 and 11 where it, says, where it says, we count them happy which endure. People is happy when they can endure trials and tribulation of the world. Be an overcomer. God got you. They find you off your job. Don't give up. They got another job out there. Always know that sometimes we stay on, on jobs and, or in relationship too long. And once... They give up on you, okay? Hold that head up and go on out there and get you something else. You be over. Don't let nobody make you quit nothing or nothing. Okay, how it is, how bad the situation may seem. You may have cancer, and the doctor say, I give you three days to live. That's what the doctor say. But what do God say? Now, the earthly doctor done told you one thing. Now you got to go to your heavenly doctor. What would Jesus do? Jesus is right there. Then you got folks not living to tell about it. Cancer free. All kind of testimony. If I figure he can do it for them, he can do it for me too. I'm going to be an overcomer. You got people that have had strokes. Huh, they still living to tell about it. Overcome all that. Didn't give up. The 
the Lord still was right there with them. You got people that lost jobs after jobs after jobs, and now they make it over a hundred thousand dollars a year, or uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year. When they was on this job, when they were making more than ten nine dollars an hour, and now you making fifty and sixty dollars an hour, cause you didn't give up. Overcome all that. Some people been in relationships I know for about 20, 30 years. Man ain't married you yet. Then all of a sudden he going to get married to somebody else and you just can't go on because you thought maybe you was going to be that wife and stuff. If he done been with you five years and he ain't married with you yet, yeah, you need to give him up and then you let the Lord send you somebody else because if it's of God, Believe me, he going to marry you. That's the same thing about women. What woman done been with you for 30 years, ain't married with you yet, hey, this, uh, you need to go out there and find you another godly woman that God got for you out there. Like you got some women just don't want to be married. You got some men that just don't want to be married. But if you're together, God honor marriages. I just use marriage as an as, I mean, example. Some people have been sick, I know, about eight, nine, ten years. Still holding on to God, unchanging hands, still saying God is good, still going to church, still getting around, still doing good, still talking. Sometimes they hardly can get out of bed. Maybe coughing and blue and everything. But they feel that script that they have got from the Lord. Run and not be weary. You go into Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, read Isaiah 40. Read the entire where you can end up in the end. Where they running and not be weary. Running a race. The race of life. Keep on getting up. Keep on doing. You just don't, I mean, and now you see that they help. He done gave them their help back. They scrimped because they depended on him. And they was going to run that race until the end. Overcome us. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. You got some people that have been struggling with paying their bill, their light bill, water bill, gas bill, their house note, their rent. Walking, ain't got a ride, but hung on in there. Yeah, now, they, the Lord bless them where they can pay their bill, and they got more than they can even ask for. They can help somebody else out. Give us, he do that so we can overcome that, where we can help somebody else and tell somebody else they're struggling and going through the same thing that he done bought you out of. Don't give up. God got you. Okay, and then when you can go up in there, read Matthew, where it says that he, but he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. You endure to the end, what it is up until death, you saved. Absent from the body on this earth is to be present with the Lord. How they say the Lord give it. The Lord blow breath in you. He give you breath and give you life. And when you take the last breath, your breath go back up to him that gives you that breath. When he blow breath into you, not breath going back to the one that blow it into you. Mm, that's another lesson for another time. Another time. Okay. And Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We're going to leave it right there. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Overcome a part two. Don't give up. I don't care what it is. You on, long as you on this earth, don't give up on nothing. Don't give up on nobody. Don't give up on your kids. Don't give up on your parents. Don't don't give up on your brothers and your sisters. Don't give up. Just don't give 
up. Don't give up on your job. You lose that job, get another job. Just count it out, joy, that God is in the mix, even if it's paying less. God got a purpose and a he, he, he got a time and a season for us in life. He wants us to be overcomers. He wants us to overcome anything in the world because he was an overcomer. Don't give up. They asked me in the beauty shop if I do I want to get want, want to get married. I've been single a lot of years, you all. I know I've been counting for about 20 years. Yeah, your old girl Joe been single for about 20 years. I haven't been settled for 20 years, but it's just so close to those 20 years. I can't really, really, it, it, I know it's been at least about 15 years. But I desire a husband, yes, but my desire is from God. He's the head of my life. If he sends someone that I know, that he know that can handle me and that I will be happy. I know that Joe got your ways, y'all. Yes, I would love to be married. But in the other hand, if he don't, I ain't sitting around waiting, oh, I need one, Lord. I ain't got I ain't gonna get, I'm gonna get one that, to settle for nothing but what God has me for me, and that's the best. And if that comes around, yes. But if it don't, amen, I ain't worried about it. Because I do know God made woman, and she made woman for man. And two is better than one. So I ain't gave up on it yet. I might be uh, in my 90s if it's will and set and rocking. Mm -hmm. Long way. Well, Lord, you know, I'm just that. But with that being said, you know, God got a purpose and a plan and a season for everybody in that purpose in your life. And no matter what you're going through, I dare you to hold on and trust God. He will see you through. Be an overcomer no matter what you do. And don't give up. And with that being said, you all, I'm going to go and put some food on. To God be the glory, the honor, and the praise. I pray that you all have a blessed and wonderful day. Because Jesus loves you so, so much. And so do I. I thank you all for coming over here watching me. Well, we are studying the Bible. We are learning together. I don't know everything. You may not know everything, but we learning this together. So, with that being said, I will. Let's see, let me take a little, wait, 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 take a little coffee. Now, y'all know I don't love my coffee, but I do my tea. But, I will see you on the next video. And I am out.